we're going to integrate this thing using the partial fractions decomposition method. And as it turns out, if I have a repeated linear factor like this, so it's been repeated twice, then this proposal is general enough to always work. I'll say that this integrand x over the quantity x plus 2 squared is equal to some unknown over x plus 2. So that's that linear factor to the first power plus some other unknown over x plus 2 quantity squared. So if this was like, if it was raised to the third power, you would have to add a third term. So you just, you start with the first power and you work your way up all the way to whatever the power is for the repeated linear factor. Okay, so then I'm going to multiply both sides of this by x plus 2 quantity squared. And that gives me an x on the left-hand side. One of those factors cancels. Again, just to make it clear what I'm doing, I'm multiplying both sides by x plus 2 quantity squared to clear all the denominators out. And then the b will be left by itself because both of those factors cancel. Okay, so this time I'm going to illustrate a little different technique for finding the a and b. Um, one option is to just split up all the coefficients of x and all the constants and then compare them on the left and right hand sides. But there's another clever technique where you just substitute different values of x in order to solve for the, for the a's and b's or c's if you have a more complicated problem. And in this case, a clever substitution would be x equals negative 2. If I plug that in, I get a negative 2 on the left-hand side. The reason I chose negative 2 is because it kills the term containing a, and I immediately have b. All right, what else should I substitute? Um, I suppose I'm not going to get a with a, with a single substitution, so I'm going to just plug in an x that makes my life as simple as possible, and I get 0 equals 2a plus b, but I know b is negative 2. So 0 is 2a minus 2. Add the 2 to both sides and divide by the coefficient of a. And I get a equals 1. OK, so then my integral is transformed into a over x plus 2. So 1 over x plus 2 minus a 2 over x plus 2 quantity squared. And each of these pieces is guessably simple. I have a 1 over x plus 2 that integrates to just natural log absolute value of x plus 2. And then minus a 2 times the integral of, of 1 over x plus 2 squared. Well, that's just x plus 2 to the negative 2 power. So when I integrate, I get that to the negative 1 power divided by negative 1. So that dividing by negative 1 is going to kill that minus sign out in front. And it's just the same thing to the negative 1 power, so it looks like that. And plus C, and we're done.